So this is a pass here question, right? And this there's a light rigid rod x y with weight w. So later on, uh, there will be another recording to show you how you can use the vector resolution method to solve this question. But for me, I'm going to draw a vector diagram. So there's a right, there's a light, a light rigid rod x y. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. The W is fixed at one end. So if it's light, I assume that the rod has no weight. Okay. The rod, the rigid rod X, Y have no weight. Okay. The only weight comes from this object W. The rod is in equilibrium, resting on the support Z on the vertical wall X. The support exerts a force R. So this is the force from the support, maybe it's a pivot, maybe it's a hinge, maybe it's a nail, okay? And the diagram shows the direction, but not the magnitudes of the forces of R and W. So they just show direction. Okay, what is the direction of the force on the rod at X? Well, what you could do is you can extrapolate the line of force for W. Let me change color. Extrapolate the line of action for W. So I will draw a line like this. This is the line. Okay. Or you could draw, I guess, a vector line, a dotted line now. Extrapolate the force. Okay, I'm going to try my best. Lah. So I'm going to look very straight. Okay. And you can extrapolate the line for R. Where will they intersect? They will intersect somewhere down here. Okay. I'm going to now pause and draw a better line. Okay, so this is my best attempt. The line of action of W is like this. The line of action of R is like this. And they intersect here. Meaning the line of force on X uh, must also join here. Okay, so I'm going to change color and draw that line. Wherever this force is, it will be in this direction. Here. This will be the line of action of the wall on the rod. So... That means the direction of D. I mean, I don't know what the magnitude of D is. There's not enough information and I probably need to calculate. But if I extrapolate all of this, they should all meet at a point. See, all meet at a common point. So this will be your force at F at point X, FX. So the answer is D. Okay, extrapolating helps. It makes answering this question easier compared to resolving. But resolving always help, always works as well. All right. Uh, one more thing I want to point out is, you see, uh, this force of the wall on the rod is pointing diagonally downward. But this force of the wall on the rod is pointing diagonally upward. So this R force, uh, it, you know, it may be, okay, maybe I shouldn't call this X, maybe I'll call this R. It could be pointing up, it could be pointing down, we don't know. But the, the whole point of this Rx here, is that there is a component that is the normal force. It is the friction that changes direction. That's why this R can change direction. Sometimes your friction will, will be downwards like this. You know why? Because maybe this W is very strong and this rod is about to slide up. So the friction must be acting downwards. Okay, so friction acting down because the an x of rod about to slide up. You don't need to know uh, this, but this is why the direction of R will change. Because sometimes the rod will be like sliding up because W is providing that clockwise moment. So you imagine the system is like this, and then you pull on. Am I pushing in the right direction? Yes, and you pull on this side. So the other side, pull on this side, the other side will slide up. Pull down on W, this side will slide up. Okay, so in this case, if you pull on the lamp, maybe the weight itself is strong, or maybe the cable itself is about to pull this one upwards. We don't know. Okay, so always use this extrapolation, especially when the question didn't give you any values. You, you can't calculate, right? So by extrapolating, this will help you decide or where the direction of R is. Okay, yeah. so in this case, you could say, teacher, wouldn't, wouldn't the, the, the lamp pull the metal rod? This side will go up. Yeah, 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 but the cable could also be pulling. So you don't. 
So always extrapolate and look at the direction of forces in this case. So the answer is common point, intersect at the common point, net torque zero. Look for the intersection. But how would the diagram of forces or your vector triangle look like for this particular rod x, y? Pause the video, draw first. Ah, then you play again and see whether you and I draw the same drawing or not, okay? I assume you already pause and draw. You got some triangle on your paper. All right, let's check out your triangle versus how I would draw mine. Okay, first things first, I'm going to draw W. You know why? Because W is the easiest draw. W is always downward one. Ma. So maybe I draw W at that low. Teacher, what length? Don't know. Because you don't know the magnitude. Don't care. Just draw Just draw like that. Okay. All right. Teacher, this two falls very weird. Leh. So let's say I call this Rx. Okay. So Rx is actually pointing in somewhat this direction. Okay. If you're feeling a bit like, mm, teacher, I want to maintain the, the direction. Can, can, can. I maintain the direction for you. Okay. So this is the direction of Rx. I don't know how long this is, but the direction is correct. Just like I don't know how long the other value of R is, but the direction is correct. But you see, uh, this one is pointing in this direction. So if I want to complete the direction, right, this one must be down here. Because this blue arrow, that this blue line that I'm moving is pointing upwards. Uh. Okay, let's say I change. Can I change this to an arrow? I cannot. Okay, so let's say this one is like that. So I need to whoops, form a triangle using these three lines. Did you can? Uh, can. I put this one here, lo. Okay, now I form for you, lah. What I need to do is I extrapolate this one and then, whoops, can't click on the big one. Then I extrapolate this one and they will eventually intersect. This is my vector diagram. Okay. Of course, I can do this on a digital tablet, but you should be able to just draw the direction, draw a short arrow, and then just connect everything into a triangle. So draw a short arrow in the direction of R. Okay, how do I know I'm supposed to put R below? Because, uh, well, there are actually a few ways to draw this, lah, but, you know, this is W, and this one here is Rx. You get that cyclic triangle, okay? So I think my, my reasons for putting uh, the, this blue one down here is because if I put it up here, I can sort of still get a vector drawing like this. But my Rx, this one is pointing away. So the value of, sorry, the R is pointing away. If this R is pointing in this direction, then cannot, right? Where's your cyclic triangle? R and W cannot be pointed in the opposite direction. It should be cyclic one after the other. Okay. Okay. All right. I think that's it for this one. Go find more examples from all your past year question, you go flip around, flip around, okay, flip around, try to find uh, some questions, draw some triangles, okay, just to make sure that you're familiar with your vector drawings.